remember that it is already a battleground remember that krishn himself has tried the utmost to avert war he himself had gone as a messenger to the court of duryodhan and tried his best now all that is behind before war the right action is please try to prevent war war means a lot of suffering on the battlefield now you cannot act like a peacenik now you have to be an eagle not a dove now you must fight next one comes from ron jagannathan he says the core philosophy of advait vedant is experiencing brahm raman maharshi educated direct inquiry for the same how many people have experienced brahm this way how long does the training usually take ron that's not the core philosophy of advait vedant brahm is not an object to be experienced in fact vedant or advait vedant are not at all about brahm so much even though they name themselves as brahma vidya practically when it comes to you and me from our perspective it is about dissolution of the experiencer not adding another experience to the experiencer's kitty you see the experiencer is a sucker for experience he is thirsty he is thirsty because all his life he has been taking in things that have not only not quenched his thirst but have actually worsened it exaggerated it so he is in a deep problem his throat is burning he looks this way and that way and wants to experience more and more that's our situation that's the general situation of mankind so he wants to add to this long list of the objects he has experienced and he says fine i now have advait vedant i want to experience brahm as well the trouble here is this experiencer exists only in his own dimension and therefore can experience stuff only in his own dimension so all the stuff that he experiences is bound to have a certain commonality this brahm that he wants to experience will not be very different from the men and women and the food and the drinks he has experienced so far in his life are you getting it see can you experience something in four dimensions can you but you have experienced a lot such a great diversity of experiences you have but do you see that that diversity is actually not diverse really all the objects that you have experienced so far belong to your own dimension and which is the dimension of three dimensional perception in space have you ever experienced anything that is not inside time so in your lifetime you have experienced so much but all the objects that you have so far experienced all belong to the stream of time and therefore they all are similar or even same now if you insist that you must experience brahm what kind of brahm would this be that has become an object of your experience it would be a three dimensional brahm belonging to the stream of time otherwise you cannot experience it 
And that's exactly what the experiencer wants. He says, I want to remain as I am. Give me something more to consume. I have consumed so much, so much, so much, so much. Now give me Brahma also. The trouble is, if it keeps insisting, it will get some kind of a Brahma to consume. So many people get Brahma and they walk around. All puffed up. We have experienced Brahma. It's not about Brahm, it's about, I repeat, the dissolution of the hungry experiencer. And once that hungry experiencer is gone, there is just Brahm. For whom? Not for you, you are gone. You are not there to experience Brahm. It's like asking, if I die, will I come to greet you? No, you are gone. Then. If I will not experience anything after I am gone, why should I die at all? Of what use is dying to me? After all, if Brahm is useful, it must come to me in my lifetime and become a part of my experience. Sir, if you are insisting, Ron says, that the real thing is about the dissolution of the experiencer, then why should I be interested? I am the experiencer, if I am gone, what benefits will I avail? Sir, your dissolution is the biggest benefit you can avail. Why? Because you are unhappy with yourself. Are you alright? No, you are not. Please understand. You have a, a, a sore somewhere on the body. Let's say you have a tumor in your arm. Hmm? If you have a tumor in your arm, that tumor dissolves. Is it good or bad for you? Is it good or bad for you? Because you are unhappy with the tumor, right? You have a tumor on your arm and what do you feel about the tumor? You are unhappy with the tumor. So once the tumor goes away, that itself is quite a relief. Or do you want something in exchange for the tumor? Do you tell the surgeon, Sir, if you are Taking away this tumor, make sure that you give me an equal weight of jaggery at least. You know, something I should have. This tumor is some 80 grams. Give me at least 8 grams of something in return. Do you say that? That's foolish. Because it is sufficient for you, it is enough that the tumor has been taken away. Now what if your entire existence is a huge tumor? Now, you will not easily agree. So let me make it easier for you. Are you happy with any bit of yourself? What is the definition of a tumor? A tumor is something you are not happy with. Right? Are you really happy with your finger? Tell me. Seriously. Don't you want to improve it? Don't you subconsciously wish it were better? I mean, is there a person who is perfectly happy with his body and your finger is a part of your body? So if tumor is something you are unhappy with, then actually you are unhappy with every bit of yourself. Are you happy with your past? Are you happy with your wife? Are you happy with your qualifications? Are you happy with the marks you got? I am not talking of being moderately satisfied. I am talking of being perfectly contented. Are you perfectly contented? Don't you secretly wish you had a better wife or husband? Don't you want that your score sheet read 100% instead of 86%? I mean, that's a marks you obtained in your graduation. That's, I know, too high for you. Maybe 66%, but let's keep it at that. Do you understand this? We are not happy with any bit of our existence, which means we are actually just one big palpitating tumor. So it is enough that this thing dissolves. Don't ask for anything in return. This is called Brahm attainment, when there is nobody left to attain anything. Are you getting it? So don't cultivate the hope that one day you will have some kind of a supernatural, outrageous experience and then you can call yourself, label yourself as some kind of a Brahm Jnani and then go about the town drumming your newfound status and achievement. That's not the 
thing. Getting it? When you ask how many people have experienced Brahma this way, sir, you know, Brahma is the dissolution of this question. When your mind will be able to transcend such superficialities, that's the Brahma state. Brahma state of what? Nothing. Brahma. Brahma in its own state. Similarly, how long does the training usually take? What is some kind of a commando training or something? Hmm? What are you expecting? Hmm? It, it's, it's actually quite hilarious. I'm, I can't help imagining what your imaginations are. How long does the training take? What does long signify? Time. See, mind. What is it asking for? Something in time. As long as this question is there, where is the possibility of Brahm realization? It's not as if your questions are all answered. It's just that these questions start appearing trivial. You don't want to ask something stupid. Hmm? That's the Brahmi state. Getting it? These things just don't appeal. Something else has been obtained. I mean, again, the words will mislead you. Something very ugly has been shed, dropped. And you are very contented with what you have lost. Hmm? There is a contentment that appears to come on attainment. And there is a contentment that arises on dropping stuff. When you come to the later, then you will know what Ramana Maharshi was saying. Self-inquiry. In self-inquiry, you do not come upon great diamonds and jewels hidden in your mind. Self-inquiry reveals to you all your sicknesses. When you throw the light of awareness on them, you find that those sicknesses vanish. Hmm? What remains? Absolutely nothing, sir. It's a blissful absence. An absence in which there is just nothing of your usual bickering and tensions and squabbling. None of these. And that's bliss. Getting it? 